so the very first thing that we're going to do on this American Victorian furniture in order to strip it, we're actually reversing what the upholsterer did. So we're starting from the last thing that he did. And the last thing the upholsterer did the last time was place this wood piece on the top after it had all been upholstered. And I'll show you what I mean. So some of these come off easy and some don't. This one happened to come off really easy. Um, but these are dowels and usually they're glued and uh, they're a little harder to take off. If you do have a piece that's, that's harder, just be careful with the chisel. Do not use a tack remover. Um, use a chisel, but be very gentle when you're trying to pry it up and do it slow to time. You'll hear the glue cracking and just really ease it off. So that's that. So our side cut is a, a great tool to have when you're stripping furniture. Um, we're going to have a wooden mallet and we're going to have a tack remover. So now I'm going to start with my ply grips and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the gimp which is glued on. I'm going to work a corner up and then I'm going to cut it right here and then I'm going to carefully, I'm careful, I tr don't, you obviously do not use the wood for leverage. If you're going to use any part of the sofa, use the old fabric, come down this way. Now if you're lucky, the fabric comes separate from the, I mean the gimp comes separate from the fabric. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to separate the two so that I can take this off. There we go. So I always like to see that. I cut this right here. And sometimes you could just pull. Now on some veneer pieces, you have to be careful here when you're pulling that you don't take the veneer. But on this piece here, because it's not veneered, it's a solid piece of wood that's been finished. Um, it comes right off and so I try to be as gentle as I can so the gimp comes off first and then I see staples so we know looking at the staples onto this fabric it's not the original upholstery that's a, that's an indication staples came into popularity probably about in the 1980s um, and this sofa is at least a hundred years older than that so um, but to take staples out we can use our tack remover which is also a staple remover and uh, again, you don't want to come this way. This is a beautiful piece of wood, so we want to keep it that way. So what you want to do is just gently, uh, using your mallet, try to get under the staple coming this way, your fabric side, and lift, lift up. And then with the side cutters, take the staple out the rest of the way. Now notice how I'm starting on the back of the sofa. This is what we need to do first. We're still reversing what the upholsterer did. So I'm going to just show you a couple of more techniques here. Sometimes with the side cutters, um, what I do is I, I kind of eliminate one step with the mallet. And you have to be careful when you do this. Just maybe for you advanced people, tap, tap, lift, tap, tap, lift. I'm using the back side of my, my side cutters. And then I lift it. Sometimes when you get the fabric going, now if you know your, your fabric is not going to be used, sometimes we do repair work too. You couldn't do this on a repair job. But what we're going to do is we're just going to sometimes, you know, we can get the fabric started and use the fabric as leverage. We'll pull it like this carefully. Be very careful. Notice what I'm doing with my, my right hand when I'm pulling this. I'm not just pulling this. I'm supporting this antique sofa. Now, for those of you who aren't as advanced, you may want to just use the, the method of tap, tap, lift, and then go to your side cutters. Okay, I'm trying to show you an advanced way of doing it also. And I'm going to take this off completely, this back. Again, I know that I'm not using this fabric, but notice though on the, on the cotton, I'm going to try to save the cotton. Sometimes customers want to be authentic as possible, so they, they'll ask me to reuse the, as much of the original material as you can, as long as it's not and you know, smelly or bug, bug infested, and then of course you would, you would, you're talking a different bug in there. Okay. So now this is the outside back, and the outside back is stitched. Okay. So we're going to save, we're going to save all our cover. Uh, a professional upholsterer like myself, I don't really need to save it for patterns, but sometimes I like to save it as patterns, just to, just for a reference, because I kind of like what I like here, as I see that they lined up the inside back seam with the outside back seam. So I kind of like that, so I might do it the same, but I haven't made up my mind, but I'll keep it. So this is going to come down on both sides. We're going to undo this. Simple as that. 
and then this is good. This is coming off pretty good. A lot of times on older uh, fabric, on older wood, uh, the staples don't go in as well so that you can pull the fabric. I'm going to pull the fabric down. Sometimes you can pull the fabric down like this. Take it off the bottom. So what I'm trying to do is a sensitive strip job as I can on this. I don't want to use a lot of heavy tack, heavy hammering. I want to try to preserve the piece as much as I can. So now that the outside back is off, uh, I'm going to go now and with my fingers, now you have to be careful when you do this, I want to make sure that every square inch is stripped clean of all those old staples and they're all sticking up there. You can't see, but they're all sticking out. You know, you need to make sure you're going and get every one. Okay. Okay, after we do that, I'm going to carefully come to the, to the arm and continue with my method. See how I'm holding the wood? I'm going to take the knife off over here. I want to show you now, uh, after you get your outsides off, so you start with the outside back and the outside arms. You go and you, you go over like so, and you make sure with your fingers. Don't trust your eyes that you have all the staples that are in there. The better job that you do at stripping a piece of furniture, the better it's going to look when you're upholstering it because you don't want these staples in your way. Okay, sometimes you can dig at them. Sometimes you need to take your tool, your tack remover. And for those of you who aren't quite sure about the side cut as, as a hammering tool, take your mallet, lightly tap, tap, and lift. See how nice that came up? And then you come and you take it out the rest of the way, all right? So all that has to be stripped before we get into the insides now. That's a whole different ball game on the insides. So what we're going to do is carefully peel away the cotton. And like I said, I'm going to save the cotton for now. And then this is kind of neat. Hopefully we'll be able to see a date on this. You know, I'm, I'm putting a date of 1860 on this. So it'll be interesting to see. Sometimes I'm surprised too with other things. Um, and I just saw something now. Might want to see this. There are buttonholes in this piece. And when we get to the front, we'll, we'll take a look at right now. There are no buttons showing on this piece. So I'm hoping that um, the upholsterer who did this last just simply went over the beautiful tufting that might be under this. It's always a bonus. Now if I find that, I will call the client and ask if that's what they want. Um, it's always better to do it original. And this is what uh, I find oftentimes changes that are made, they're okay to make those changes as long as you kept uh, the integrity of the piece underneath. So I'm just going to roll this off. I'm going to just save it. I doubt very much, now that I'm looking at this and all the dust coming off it, that I'm going to reuse this. I'm going to put a new piece on. It's a little too old. Okay, so we have to get the, 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 the insides are coming through here uh, to the outside, so we have to prep that so when we go to the front to start stripping uh, the front cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece off and look what we find here, folks. We find all of the cover coming from the seat and the inside back coming this way. See that? So this piece, this is just a piece of old burlap that is no good. It's called a stretcher. We will replace this. So I don't need to save this. I'm going to throw this away. Don't need to make patterns with that. That's simply a, an extra piece. Usually I use fabric because burlap tends to do what you see in here. It's caved in. Okay? So that's not good. I mean the whole purpose of doing this with the stretcher is to add support so that when your knee hits when you're moving a piece of furniture by yourself that this doesn't happen. This is good to see this in action for you uh, do it yourself is don't use burlap. Try not to use burlap. The other thing too is when you peel this away it would have been nice if they had used a piece of webbing down here. 
uh, piece of webbing would have added more support and then put your stretcher over. Would have been a much better idea. So I'm just going to take that and I'm going to rip this off. Oh, it's always a surprise when you take an old piece out this like this apart. It's kind of neat. Okay, so now I need to take this fabric. This is the inside back that's coming down being stapled here. And they have, this is the fabric, and this is a stretcher put onto that fabric. So just another piece of fabric. So look how easy, isn't this nice? And sometimes we find little things that come through here. I just found a bazooka, Joe. Oh, an old one too. If I had more time, I'd read that to you. But it's kind of fun, finding stuff. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. So let's see what else we're going to find here. You never know. Oh, we got money. Got some change. Gotta buy coffee later on. And what else do we have? Oh, I love this. It's like a treasure hunt. So this piece, what we want to do with this piece, folks, we want to pin tack this up so that we're not stripping that right away on the inside back. And you'll see in a minute what, why that's a good idea. I just need to get a couple of, you can use staples. So I have my staple gun. I'm going to pin tack or pin staple this fabric, which is the inside back fabric, up to the top here. It's just a temporary staple. You could do that with tacks, folks, too, if you're not comfortable with the staple gun. But it, it's important to get this part up so that you can get in here and take this off. This is the seat. Okay, you're loosening, just loosening for now, okay? And then clean all your staples up. Go back and clean up all your staples. And the best way to do it, I do it at least, see all these staples here, we'll clean that up. I do it at least three times. I, I, I look, take the staples, and then I feel, take the staples, and go back again, and, and, and again. It's very important that you get every single staple that's, or tack that's sticking up. Clean the piece up as best you can. Uh, because later on that will either get you, like it got me earlier with the staple, or uh, the fabric will rip on a staple like that. So I'm going to go over to the side now. Here we go again into the pouch area, or, or the money hole, some people call it. This is about as close as I'm going to get to being an Indiana Jones archaeologist than I ever will be, because this is where you find, I mean, we took the back off and found a pocket full of change and, and a Joe Bazooka. I actually got more excited of the Joe Bazooka cartoon, because I remember those as a kid. But anyhow, which, which gives me a date on the fabric, by the way, you know, that the fabric might have been uh, from the 70s. So I'm going to take this off. Who knows what we're going to find. You're we're finding this uh, quite interesting, this piece. So I don't know. Oops, what we got here? We got toothpicks. And we got some cereal, which is normally what we find. There's something else fell there. I don't know what that was. I guess we'll leave that for the sweeper. So we didn't find so much here, but that's okay. It was fun. We had some anticipation there. So I'm taking, uh, I'm taking the top off, the inside arm, and the seat. Okay, what I'm going to do is, on the uh, inside arm portion, I'm going to pin tack that up. You'll see the why when we go to the front, why this is so important to pin tack this up. Of course, I'm going to go back and clean up all these staples. And that's it. So, I'm reading, I went to read my Bazooka Joe, and I realized it's in Hebrew. And um, I'm, I'm really amazed at that. Uh, most of my mentors were, were Yiddish speakers, so this brings back a lot of memories to me. It's what I love about this, about this business. We never know what we're going to find. So let's move on. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this, the front of the seat off very carefully like we've been doing. And that seat is going to be removed, the fabric only. And uh, we have we have the benefit of a very good seat. It's in good shape. Whoever did this last time restored this. So that um, we, we don't have to restore it. We're going to reupholster it, which is what the client was charged for. Uh, but again, I want to show you. Uh, the gimp comes off first with your side cutters. And I think if you're very careful, you can use the fabric as a little bit of a wedge. 
but not the wood because we're trying to preserve this beautiful antique hand carved wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up, I'm going to come behind it. Look at that. I, I love it when I'm able to take fabric off like this. It's so much nicer not to ruin a piece by, uh, you know, if these were tough, if these were big 12, 14 ounce tacks in here, and we needed to use the mallet, you know, oftentimes you do need to use the mallet. But notice how I'm twisting in inside, not outside. So we want to preserve that wood. So I'm really liking this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on with my hands. Those of you who don't like getting cut, you may want to use gloves. But I, I don't use gloves because I get a feel for what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm applying pressure onto the fabric, but I'm holding. Look at my right hand. My left hand is applying pressure. My right hand is holding so that I don't rip the fabric this way. But I'm, I'm putting some leverage on this and the staples are coming out with the fabric and gimp and all. I love to see that. I'm not worried about veneer on this. I'm just going to continue going. I know you guys can't see this at the back side here. I'm going to continue going. Because once I get momentum, right, I like to use it. Finish taking this left side off. And I'm going to come back down to you. Okay. So the front's completely undone. And the back is also with the added pin tacking of the insides. So that when I go to pull the seat fabric, this pattern, beautiful pattern fabric that's been cut for us doesn't come with it. With it. That's very important. So we're doing a really low impact stripping of the antique sofa to try to preserve as much of the wood and as much of the integrity of the original uh, piece. So here I go. If I did a good job on the other side, this should come out fairly easy. And I'm holding the cotton as I pull. Now look for little treasures. Sometimes little treasures come here too, you know, they get stuck underneath. So far, I don't see any little treasures. Ah, oh, beautiful. This whole seat just came off for me. The seat fabric, gone. Beautiful. So I'm just going to go back. I'm going to pat, pat the seat down a little bit to make sure there's nothing came. There's no foreign object. And I am going to just quickly check this to see Oh, I have a beautiful edge roll here that's in really good shape. I may put a piece of burlap, a new piece of burlap on that in the front edge, but I'm really happy with the way this looks. Very low impact on the seat. Uh, sometimes we end up retying the springs, which is a big project. You can see that in some other YouTube videos, what, what, it, what it entails to tie springs. But this piece is not in for that. So. Um, the next thing, believe it or not, at this point, uh, we have, um, we're not going to strip this yet on the insides. And what we're going to be doing, let me explain. Okay, so believe it or not, we're upholstery ready on this piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure this piece up, and here are the components to this piece. There's a seat, inside arms, two of those, inside back, one of those, outside arms, two of those, and outside back, one of those. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually freshen this up with some new cotton, new AAA grade uh, cotton. And then what we're going to do is upholster that seat. And then we're going to take the back off. The back comes off in one piece entirely. And again, we're going to use leverage to do that. You know why? We're not going to go right in digging this in right now. We're going to get our piece of fabric on. The reason our, our new fabric is good, going to be good is it slides through and secures and then we take our pin tacking off the inside and then we take it off from, from this way. After this has been upholstered, we pull from, from the bottom and we pull using leverage the rest of the fabric. And we are going to keep that piece of fabric for patterns. We're going to cut, cut them to big sizes uh, in the beginning and then take them to pattern sizes because these are, these are cuts in here that are angled cuts and sew those and put that all in one piece and then do our outside arms and our outside back 
and then we're going to put a trim on this glue just like they glued their gimp on and then we're done. Okay, so now I'm on my outside arm, up and down measurement. This is the highest point. So I'm going to go there. I get 22 plus 3, that's 25 inches. I'm going to fill that in here, 25. Side to side. We go all the way here, swings all the way around. I get 32 plus 3, 35. Okay, and the last piece will be our outside back. Uh, outside back up and down. I get 25 plus 3, that's 28. And side to side, where our outside arm intersects with the back is right at this point. That's what I'm measuring. Side to side, I get 52 plus 3 is 55 inches. So that's it. We got all our measurements. Now we're going to go to the cutting table. So before you start cutting, you look over your measurements. In this, in, in this example with the fabric we're using, we're coming off the roll the correct way. So it's 57 inches wide. So the important measurements come on this side, on the right column. Okay, so I see two good measurements, meaning that we can get a width of fabric out of two pieces, which is what we're going to cut first. So now that we have all of our measurements, all of our math is on one piece of paper, you can see the best use of the fabric. That's what you're striving for. You look down the columns and see what you can get best out of the fabric. So I see right away there are two measurements, the seat and the inside back. Actually, there are three measurements, seat, inside back, and outside back that I can get out of a width of fabric. That is probably the best use of fabric that you can get right there. And the other measurements we'll, we'll show you as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to do the seat first. The seat measurement is 33 inches front to back and 69 inches wide. But I've already measured the seat surface area that's going to be seen. It's going to be less than 54. So this piece here is going to require us to sew a stretcher on, a piece of fabric. It doesn't even have to be this piece of fabric. It's the fabric that gets tucked inside the chair, inside the sofa, so we're not worried about that right now. So I'm going to cut my seat. So I'm going to go up 33 inches from the bottom. My, by the way, this is a beautiful cut velvet, leopard pattern, and it's beautiful. The nap's coming to the front, always to the front, folks. I've already uh, made sure that we're going the, the correct way. So I'm going to go up 33 inches, and I'm going to pick up this pattern, I'm, I'm picking up a pattern, um, sometimes it's hard, but there's the pattern right there and right there. So this is the way I cut fabric, folks. Uh, uh, if people want, they can use their tape. The their, um, best way to do cutting fabric on a pattern, though, is to go with your pattern, follow your patterns. Uh, cushions are a different thing, but we don't have any cushions on this, on this project. So I'm going to go right along here. I'm going to use my dot, dotted line. Cross. And then before this fabric leaves the table, this is very important, mark the cover, what it is, and the direction. So I'm going to mark front, F, seat. So when I put this aside and I pick it up next week or whatever, I know that that's the front of the seat and I have no question. I'm not going to turn fabric. Turning a, a cut velvet or a velvet or any fabric practically the wrong way and having one piece going the wrong way will ruin your whole job. Make sure that all your patterns are going the same way, all the direct, same direction. So I'm just going to put this aside. So that's our seat. Make sure as you're going along you cross out. I'm going to cross out seat. You don't want duplicates. I'm going to go to the next full width measurement that I have. This is great when you have three, it doesn't always happen that way, where you have three pieces that are a width of the fabric. The next width it, it's 55 by 23. Great. So I'm going to go up 23. I'm not worried about patterns here. This is an overall pattern. So we're not learning a lot with this fabric, but we're learning about measurements, which is important. So 23 inches. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to put a little chalk line in. I'm going to carry over. I'm going to pick up my pattern. Sometimes it's a little harder than right there. Then it looks. That's experience right there, though. I'm going to cut that. Sometimes, if you have a sharp pair of scissors, you can just blade it. This is called blading right through. Um, so the inside back, 
I'm going to make sure I mark the fabric. I, B, notice the direction that I'm in. I'm not at the bottom of this fabric. I'm at the top of my back. Inside back, top. An over description is better than being left there later on saying, oh, what, well, how did I mark that? Notice I'm in the middle of the fabric too. I'm not at a corner. Don't be at a corner because then you're, you're wondering which way from the corner. If it was a smaller piece, you'd see, you'd see it more. Why that's not a good idea. So I got my inside back. I'm just going to put that aside. I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to go to my next one. Now I'm skipping down too, by the way, to the outside back. I have inside arms and outside arms mixed in there. Uh, but the outside back is my width. So, so I, I move around on my measurements. I don't go right down, down the page. That doesn't ever work that way. Go down the page. You always have to get the best measurements first. There's real wisdom in this. It saves fabric. We're all about saving fabric. So my outside back measure is 28 by 55. So I'm going to go up 28 inches. I'm going to give a little slash mark there at that pattern. I'm going to pick up this pattern all the way across. It's a little harder, but sometimes it's harder to pick up on these. Okay. And it. Now for those of you who don't want to blade it across like I did, I'm going to do small little cuts like this on this one. See that? Some people are very nervous about cutting. I think most people are. But you know, it's only $300 a yard, so don't worry about it. And I'm going to fold it back and write outside back, top, T, or top. Okay, so we have three pieces cut. Now we're getting into our oddball measurements, and that's what you want to save for the last. <clears throat> I'm going to cross off the outside back. So I have, we'll do the inside arms first, which are 23 by 36. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up one side of the fabric. I'm not going to cross cut and end up with little pieces. Never do that. Always leave a piece because we might have for piping, welting, or whatever. I'll show you what I mean by that. So we got 36, we need two of these, 36 by 23. And look, at, I'm just going to put two lines here for now, watch this. Line there and a line there. I'm going to follow this line up. This is my repeat. I'm going to follow this repeat over here. If I connect the dots. Now the patterns are nice that way. You can go this way. And I'm going to mark this inside arm, IA, top. Okay, now you can use this as a pattern for the next one. You don't have to go through that process, the same process. You can just put this up like so. Unroll your fabric. Get this to lay flat. I have here to use that as a pattern. So I have both my inside arms now. A. Very important to mark the fabric. I can't say that enough. Once it leaves the table, you're in question, and that's not good. Waste time, and there's nothing worse than being unsure of yourself when you're upholstering at one piece of fabric. You'd be surprised how sometimes you can't see it until it's in the client's house. You can tell I have experience. Now, this is going to be just enough fabric. So inside arms, we have we have two outside arms left, 25 by 35. Okay, we're really close here. So what I'm going to do is 25, and I knew I was close on this job, folks. 25, <coughs> 35. And come across here. This the outside. Outside arm, O, A, top, like this. Use this as a pattern. Mark that before it leaves the table. Outside arm, 
top. We're done. We have the entire sofa cut out. And um, the next step would be to upholster the seat on the sofa and then take the old fabric off the sofa and use that as a pattern, sew that up and then put that on. Thanks once again for joining us in the YouTube videos on the Upholstery on Broadway channel.